The electric universe says that, very simply, energy is a measure of the motion of matter in relation to all the rest of the matter in the universe. In other words, there is universal connectivity, which is quite different from the model at present that we presented of the universe of isolation by huge distances and by time. And the only connection is by the puny force of gravity. The universe is connected in real time by the direct electric force. It is not mediated by any force at the speed of light, because the only thing that travels at the speed of light is an electromagnetic disturbance. As for mass, in the electric universe, mass is the response of matter to the electric force in the form of distortion rather than acceleration. And I say this because in the electric universe model, matter is a repeated pattern so that you have the atomic model, which is very successful. And when you've got one successful model, it's a good idea to see if you can repeat it at a different scale. And if you do so, and you say the electron and the proton have structure just like little atomic systems, then if you give it a poke electrically, its response will be to distort because the charged particles will tend to rearrange themselves into the ones that are orbiting into elliptical orbits at right angles to the force. That's how you get the magnetic force. The magnetic force is always at right angles to the electric force. And that's the reason because matter, like electrons and protons, have real structure. It turns out this kind of electrical communication also happens in biological systems as well. Inside our body, we have electrically charged particles that create instant communication with our body to keep it running. This is similar to how a planet has instant electrical communication with the sun and how it is able to position itself with it at all times without getting out of alignment. In this theory, there is constant understanding of a universe that runs on electrical charge down to the smallest creature on the planets themselves. If this is true, how can we explain different kinds of stars within the same electrical circuit? The stars that have been formed by the cosmic lightning are then powered by these diffuse, otherwise invisible electric current filaments. And it is that that determines the environment of the star and how it will function, whether it's a red star, or a bright white star, a blue giant, or a red dwarf. All of these things are based on the size of the body and its electrical environment. If the electrical environment changes, a star can change very quickly from one type of star to another. And this has been observed, but not recognized as being a function of the environment. And when we come to the bright stars, the main sequence stars, the difference there is that the energy density is so high that the plasma develops what's called plasma tufts. These tufts sit just off the surface of the body and they are what produces all of the bright light. It produces a spectrum which looks rather like a black body. The beauty of this particular model is that the photosphere, that bright shining object we see in the sky, our own sun, acts like a transistor. It controls the power flowing through that surface. So if the sun's environment changes, the effect on those bright stars is minimized so that our own sun maintains the same brightness within a fraction of a percent even though in X-rays, it's a, it's a variable star. It almost goes out in X-rays, and then at our solar maximum, it's very bright in X-rays. The standard story of the life story of a star is invalid. A star is not born and then self-immolates, becomes a campfire in the sky until all of its fuels run out, then it blows up or explodes as a supernova. None of that story is correct. The life story of a star is like that of an individual, and it depends very much on its environment.